Before I even had a gimbal or a travel tripod, I had a monopod. Oh yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I was not a baton twirler, but I'm gonna show you five ways on how to use this thing and get some dope shots. Let's go. <laughs> What up, A fam? Kitty here with the Tola Visuals. For those who don't know, I run a production company in California as well as play with camera gear from time to time. The first technique we're gonna talk about is called the lean. Now this one's the most popular with monopods and it's very easy to do. For the example shots I use for the push in with the sauce bottles as well as the walk flipping up as we're revealing it past the fridge. And then you could also do fun stuff like these Dutch angles where I use the kitchen counter as my transitional marker. And to do this, it was really easy with this monopod because it has this foot pedal, which is quite interesting. You don't even have to go down to be able to move it and it moves really smooth like that. But most monopods will have this kind of ball head at the bottom where you just kind of unlock it and then it'll lean like that. What I like to do is if you have three legs on the bottom of your monopod here, you just step on one side and lean it back and forth like that. So you can create these crazy Dutch angles depending on where your camera is positioned. You go like that. You could also use it as like a fake slider and do some push-ins this way from front to back. Or you could have it on manual focus and have it a push in towards something that's out of focus and have it be in focus when you get there. It's nice to have monopods that have these little feeties at the bottom because you can set them down and walk away and also provides a little bit of extra stability when you are doing these lean shots. Personally, right now we're using the iCan E image monopods here and they're two different versions. This one's more like a compact version with a foot pedal and this one's more sturdy and also has this cranky, it extends it pretty easily. That's something I've actually never seen before. And the feet on the bottom of these are actually like the widest and strongest that I've seen on any monopod. So the next technique is low angles. This is really great if you don't have a gimbal to go inverted or you're just going handheld and you don't wanna hurt your back. You get these low angles if you just flip this upside down. So we got that with the orange shot as it fell out of the grocery bag there. Just flip it upside down, then when you're editing it, you just flip it back around. So simple. And then if you have a camera that has a tilt-out screen, you could tilt it out that way and you could still see it when it's still at a low angle. For our next technique, we're gonna do some high angles or overheads. Now, the good part about these monopods is that they go really, really tall. You can get really simple to do overheads like I did with the chopping of the veggies or over here on the stove and you don't have to set up a whole C-stand system. You just hold it over and you can get those shots really, really fast and easily, especially if you have a minimum amount of space as well. I really like tall monopods. I will show you how tall they are. Personally, I am 5'3", so we could compare off of that. Let's bring these suckers as high as they go. They're still taller than the frame. Voila! Okay, since this one has a crank, we're gonna have to crank that up. Give me a minute. I don't know exactly how tall they are, but it looks like seven and a half feet. Okay, even though this is a compact tripod, it does go as high as this one, but obviously this thicker one is gonna be a little bit more stable, especially when it's up this high. But either way, do not leave these alone. These shots are also good if you're doing real estate, for instance, or you wanna show an establishing shot. You could just scale a wall or make sure you have some foreground so it shows some bit of movement. If you throw a gimbal on there, you could get some fake jib shots or fake drone shots when you can't fly a drone as well. But what I like to use these really tall monopods for is when I'm shooting events and there's lots of crowd 
It's easy to maneuver and also it goes really tall so you could see over everyone's head to get the speaker on stage or the musician, whatever you're trying to shoot over people. But we're all at home right now, so maybe you'll use that tip later on. Yes. Our next technique is shooting through things. I feel like a monopod is the best way to get through things. So obviously we're still stuck inside, so there's only so many things I could shoot through. I didn't have any frames or circular things, so I did use my outdoor window as well as the outside table there. But get more creative, you could definitely have a lot of fun with that. All right, the last one is rack focusing. Because you're not going handheld, you do have a free hand when you are shooting. Most of the time you want this on the camera at all times. So it does leave your hand to do manual focusing if you want to rack focus between the ingredients like we did here or the final dish shot. Or you could also touch focus if you like to do it that way as well. There are many. First off, they are a lot quicker to set up than a tripod. As you can see, there's just one leg, so if you want to extend it or make it go lower, it's easy to do so. Another benefit, it does take the weight from your arms and your wrists if you're going handheld running around an event, for instance. So when I was doing a lot of music festivals, I definitely used the monopod every single time because it does get tiring walking around carrying a camera with like a 70 to 200 sometimes, or a zoom lens, your wrist does hurt after a while. So this makes it a lot easier on your body as well. And they both come with arms. And if you shoot video, they also have tension on the head here. And then this one's a little bit better though, in terms of its fluid head. But they're both pretty good. And lastly, it is the cheapest budget-friendly option. It's cheaper than probably most of the tripods that you wanna get, especially with the video fluid head here or any gimbal. So if you're on a budget, this is a great choice. Thanks for our partners at ICANN for letting us play with these e-image monopods for today. I've been personally wanting to update my monopod for a while because I've had it for so long. For me personally, I like using this compact one more because I enjoyed the foot pedal and because of how small it is, it does get really tall. So that impressed me the most. But if you need some more stability and a better fluid video head, this is the way to go too. They're both good choices. Find my IG because I post there on the daily UGU fam and I'll see you when I see you. Stay safe and yeah, mm, done.